Hi, welcome back to Garden Ninja, and it's the second episode in the Rewilding Garden series. Now today I'm going to be showing you behind the scenes of the garden design and showing you all the different components that are going to help bring in loads more wildlife to the garden and help turn that blank canvas into a really rich, wonderful place for both wildlife and visitors. So come on, let's get cracking. So here we have the final render of the garden. So I've already drawn up my plan view, which shows all the dimensions and proportions of the mown paths, the spacing of the trees. And this is where it all gets really exciting because I then render this up in a 3D format. So it brings it to life. It pulls the things off the flat page and makes them look uh, to, a, to a degree 3D. So we'll start with the path. So here we've got this meandering path. that's going to float through the garden, almost like a serpentine fashion. We've then got these two circular mown parts of lawn. So all this path and lawn here are going to be kept clipped and mown. So they'll be short like a regular lawn. But then you can see we've got all of these trees positioned throughout. And these are going to add both height and different amounts of shade to the garden. So they're going to add a lot of height and texture and interest. And the way that they've been positioned is to pull your eye through the garden. And you'll notice that in certain parts, we've got trees or shrubs that are blocking or prohibiting the full view. And what that means is it adds drama and excitement because by very nature, we are inquisitive beings and it's going to want to say to us, right, when we get through there, what's around there? And it will slow down the journey into the garden. You'll also notice we've got a few of these little wood piles and they're to signify the bug hotels and sort of the wildlife hotspot areas that I'm going to be building in later videos. We've also got these blobs of colour, which are going to be a mix of native shrubs. And these yellow blasts through here are all going to be a mix of herbaceous perennial native plants that I'm going to weave into this design. So at the moment, it looks lovely. And we've got to get back outside now and start to plant up a proportion of these shrubs and all the native plants. Keep this path mowed and then it will really start to come to life. So one of the main benefits of a wildlife garden, other than helping Mother Nature, is maintenance and it's a real consideration with garden design. With a wildlife garden it's going to be pretty much minimal maintenance apart from mowing through the paths every 10 days or so, cutting down the herbaceous perennials at the end of the season. There's going to be very little maintenance that I need to do to this garden. The garden is simply going to exist for a large part of the year doing its own thing, allowing nature to move in, take up residency, birds in the trees, insects on the ground, and there's going to be very little disturbance from me and that's a real key part to this design it's about working with nature rather than against it now i had considered putting in an annual meadow flower bed throughout the entire garden but the more research i did i found that it's going to involve an awful lot of groundwork and expense and i kind of feel like i'm going to be fighting against nature rather than working with it because it's already turfed it's been a paddock for years and there's already surrounding trees i'm going to work with that so I'll remove a few of the perennial weeds as I go along and introduce some more herbaceous perennials. But I'm really intrigued to see what lies beneath and what pops up over the first few years. And I think that's a really important point is that where possible, we should try and work with what we've got rather than completely redesign the wheel. So we've had a look at the design. I think it's about time we got our jackets on, went outside and I can introduce you to some of these amazing new trees that I've planted in the last month. So come on, let's get outside. So we're in the rewilding garden now, and if you look behind me, you might notice a number of posts. And each one of those posts is a tree that I planted back in February, and they're coming into leaf. So let's have a look at some of the specimens. Down here, this little chap is a blue spruce. So if you think of a Christmas tree, you're not far off with this. It's not native to the UK, it's native to North America, but it's an evergreen conifer, and it's gonna give us that structure year round. Great for wildlife, great for that blue colour and the texture of the needles. It will get quite tall, it'll get probably up to about 15 or 20 metres, but it's relatively slow growing. So next up we've got the bird cherry, the prunus padris, which will have amazing white flowers in spring when it comes into blossom, followed by the leaves throughout the summer that are sort of a, a rich green colour, followed by red berries in September. And the bird cherry's nickname really gives it away that it provides loads of food for birds. They absolutely love this tree. And this is a native here in the UK. 
Now take a look down here, we've got the Douglas fir. So this was brought over in 1827 by David Douglas the botanist. So whilst technically it's not a native tree to the UK, it's been around long enough that pretty much everyone will recognise it. It's going to grow massive. Take a look down at this tiddler. Now this is a European larch. Don't let its size deceive you, this thing's going to grow humongous. And we've got three of them here in the garden, grouped together to really pull your focus into the central seating area. Now these are the only deciduous conifers here in the UK. So in winter they're going to drop the majority of their needles, exposing this sort of brutal skeletal structure. But they're really good for wildlife. Red squirrels, insects and beetles all love this tree, which is why I've got three of them to really draw in all that wildlife. Last but not least, we've got the Scots pine here. Now this is going to grow humongous, which is why it's on the edge of the garden and it's got loads of space to grow. Now these are synonymous with those windswept pines that you see, where the trunk's been exposed and the top layer looks a bit like a cloud made of conifer. So it's going to add a real architectural blast to this garden. So there we go, my behind the scenes look at the design of this wildlife garden. Now in the next set of videos I'm going to be introducing some native shrubs and marking out that path that's going to meander through the garden. So in the next set of videos you're probably going to see it really start to take shape because at the moment it's just a patch of grass with a few trees that I've planted in. So make sure you check back soon to follow the progress of this, the rewilding garden. I've been Garden Ninja, if you've liked this video make sure you subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and check out my YouTube channel where there are now over a hundred garden design hints, tips and hacks to help you make your garden look awesome. Happy gardening!